for me to create work that look back at the viewer is a way to refuse to be made into an object and to say that I see you. I grew up in uh, a city called Sarsborg. Um, it's one hour from Oslo. And I grew up with my mom and my sister. And my mom is Norwegian and my father is Nigerian, but he left and went back to Nigeria when I was three years old. I very early had the understanding of um, the importance of art um, and the value of it. And I also very early found out that this was my way of processing feelings, emotions, but also that it gave a lot of pleasure to work with images. And I think also back then in Sashpa, it was a society where it was very few that looked like me and my sister. So the representations was not there. And if they were, it was not so good representations. Often very racialized, sexualized. So I was also very early aware of the power of uh, footage, of power of images. And I think that has been with me ever since, the importance of images, but also the joy of working with it and, and putting things together to create new realities and new identities. I'm born in 1986, and at that time it was very few people that looked like me and my sister. Most people were white. And of course, when you grow up in your family, you are just Frida. You don't realize that you have a skin color. But you easily realize that when you start in kindergarten and, and people start to notice that you are brown, um, you are not white. So I got a lot of questions of where are you really from? Um, when I asked, I'm from Norway, I'm from here, but where are you really from? And I think that affected um, the way I view myself and also I start to question my, you know, do I belong here? And if I don't belong here, where do I belong? Like, this is my culture, I'm born here. Um, so I think that shaped the understanding of me and um, uh, identity. As I grew older, I got more and more interested in, in images um, and to work with images and to make work that spoke to my own reality and to collect images and to collect images that um, had uh, photos of people that looked like me and that was positive representations. For me, that was very important. I felt I belonged at the same time my belonging was questioned. So it was this... Um, this complex relationship to Norway, to where I was born, and this complex understanding of identity, you know, who you are. So you are trying to find that out, not by writing, but by being creative, um, drawing, painting, working with images. I was, you know, 18, 19, 20 when I started to do that. So before that, it was more drawing. So I collected images from books. Um, and I was um, drawing uh, on top of them and using them for my own work. But I didn't define it as work and I didn't have a knowledge about what I was doing as like um, uh, a thing that helped me to sort things and to place ideas, uh, questions. It was uh, very intuitive. It's still in very intuitive, but I think like... Um, the, the reflection started when I started to exhibit my work, when I started to get questions about my work. Then I was actually forced to reflect of, of the things, why, why am I working with the things I'm working with? Why am I spending hours, you know, in front of the screen, finding things, storing things, and, and then manipulating, cutting up, uh, putting things together again? I think this search for images was a type of hunger. I was hungry to see images that resemble me because I was not used to that. We didn't have, we had books at my home, but it was not many art books. 
and when I started to have access to it, I got crazy. And I think um, access to internet uh, further uh, fueled that hunger. I started to work with collages without thinking about it as collages because I had the need to manipulate reality to, to create my own narrative. And that started with the family uh, images. Like you have um, a family that is no longer a family. You have people in your family that have different experiences of that, different narratives, and you wanted to create your own narrative. And then you need to manipulate. We are in my studio, which is my apartment where I live. So like that room is very secret and holy. Even my daughter that is three years, she, she is careful when she's playing in that room, you know. She knows it's, it means a lot to me. So what you see here is a new work that I'm working on for, for a show next year. And the images is a mix from colonial archive and art from the Renaissance and especially artwork that shows uh, women taking their own lives or is linked to suicide. So this is what I'm working on for this exhibition and I have printed it out, uh, enlarged it first and then printed it out after making a digital collage. And as you see, can see, I've already cut out the pieces and I will now tape them together. So I will make a first base after I made a base, I will start on the layers. And the first base is not, um, it can be blurry, uh, I don't mind that, but the second base, I will see what I need to fix. So when I see things that needs to be changed, things that are is too blurry, I like blurry, but blurry can work and blurry cannot work. I will change the layers, I will manipulate it further. Uh, or I will have to find new pieces to replace uh, the pieces that doesn't work. When I have found all of the layers, I will start to pin the layers together and then it will soon be complete. The images is taken from, from painting from the Renaissance and it depicts women that is about to commit suicide. But what you will see in the images that I've chosen is that there's no blood and the knife is barely touching the skin. And I, I just, I like the shape and I like the, the, the way these women are holding the knife towards their own belly, which can be also linked to not only suicide, because what I do is that I take that image and, I'm, and I take some parts of it. So even though it's linked to an actually attempt of, of, of suicide. Or, or, it's not what I want to reflect in my work purely. I like the knife. I like it's barely touching the belly. But it can also be a knife that can be twisted towards you. So what I will do is that I search for, I, I, that is also something aesthetical, like vin I like vintage, I like everything that is old. So I will often search for, you know, vintage images, black women, vintage photos, and then many things pop out and I will collect the images that I like, that speaks to me in some way. Often I will use images from colonial archives. And then I will start with an image that I really like. It can be, for instance, let's say um, a woman lying in a bed, but it's a white woman lying in the bed. So I will just start with the head take away the head, put in the head I want, and that totally changed um, the context, the narrative. And I think you are constantly reminded while you are going through different archives, um, the invisibility and also the violence that has been inflicted uh, on black bodies. Maybe it's a bit of, of, of violence and anger in it when I'm working. It's like you want to rip everything away that you feel have made you invisible and to sort of force yourself in and to say like, I'm here. I've always been here, but now I'm visible, now you can see me. I often mention also the importance of the uh, stare. 
to pick images of, of, of women, not always women, but most of the time it is women that stares back. Many times I will say there's a lot of, um, um, that the collage shows a lot of frustration and anger. Um, and, and even like um, being directly hostile, like you're entering a room and you will, you will meet the, the, the stare that um, is not um, uh, often friendly. And I think that is also my own feeling sometimes to be looked at, that it's um, in a way a message, um, like what are you looking at? Um, um, but also, like I said, it's, um, it will confront you um, with what I am thinking that you are thinking. And I think that is what I'm mad about when I, when I um, encounter people that doesn't have any position, they are neutral, um, but you are, you have a position, you have a skin, you have a culture, and then it's just a hope to, to enter this dialogue. Is it sadness? Is it um, an anger that feels strong? This is at least what I want. I want them to be strong, even though they are showing sadness and, 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 and anger. I also want them to, to uh, be vulnerable. So it's just to show these complex feelings. And I, I don't think it's, it's one, um, this is showing that and that is showing that. I want it to be complex. And I think also when people look at it, they will have different feelings of it. I think my mother and my sister and my partner is like my number one fans when it comes to my work. But it also means like, um, I think it has opened up, especially between me and my mom, it has opened up a new dialogue around um, growing up in Norway, what my own experiences with racism, that it has actually helped us to have dialogues that we didn't have before. I want people to dive into themselves and to recognize their own position. And I think that is the essence of my work.